Hi, future. How's it going, future? That's for people in the future on YouTube. Hello, future. So I want to keep it under an hour and a half. And since this is already the second part of the video and we haven't even gotten into the game yet, a 10 minute game is the, the shortest time. The beginning of the intermediate stage of the intermediate beginner stage of the intermediate stage. And we're going to play um, a bit of a petite opening today. A petite opening. We're going to play this move. Now it looks so unassuming, but actually almost everything from here is basically forced. Now, obviously, you have to take back with the bishop. That goes without saying. Now, castling is forced. Now, he's going to have to, yes, he's going to have to play that move. That's the correct move. And now we're going to play this unassuming move, but it has fangs. Be careful of that move. It has fangs. You don't want to touch it or get too close to it. It will bite you. Now, it's forced for, he has to take. And after we take back, now, it's also forced that he plays Oh, no, 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 no. And now we ask the question. Now we're going to ask, we're asking a chess piece of question. And you might think, ha, 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 that's funny. That is funny. I am laughing at that. But you shouldn't laugh at that because it's not a joke. Nothing about it is funny. In fact, it is the least funny thing I have heard about all day long. And I've heard a lot of unfunny, unfunny things all day. People have been telling me not jokes. They have not been telling me jokes. No one has told me a joke all day long. Now that was forced. So of course that's what he plays. And now queen b3, now of course he has to play queen b6. That move is forced. And I'm assuming that we'll see it. Or he's perhaps just going to give us the game. Either one is possible. Now... Do we want to... Okay, now he is some, he's made some kind of mistake that I don't understand. And so we're going to very simply x-ray the queen. Now, there are one, two pieces, three pieces between the rook and the queen right now. But imagine a future on the board. You have to imagine a future. You have to go into your mind palace. And you have to see what's the board going to look like in five, six moves. Then get back to me. Then tell me. Then tell me that you understand. And until then, you don't. You don't understand anything. Okay? And we're going to play this move. We're going to play this move looking to come in. That would be a huge mistake. A huge mistake. We are going to play this move. We are going to lock his pawn down. So then we can play this move. Because then, if that, that... And bam, the game is over. So what does he do? He's going to have to play a move like this. That's, and he does play that move. It was basically forced. But now, what do we have? Well, we have the ability to pin him. And that is exactly what we will do. And if I'm not mistaken, after pinning him, this is forced for him to take. Because then after we take the queen, and he takes our queen, I believe... Okay, now I believe he would have been trapped in place. Now... Don't quote me on that, but that is what I believe to be the case. So now we are going to go ahead and solidify our pawn chain. It's very tempting to play the move e4, but we're not going to do that because we are not the kind of people who are easily tempted. It is incredibly hard to tempt us to do anything. And that is a very, very typical trait of a chess enthusiast or a fixionado each, each, both are fine. Now we're going to go ahead and come in with this move, just eyeballing the queen. Even though he has a defender, we're saying, do you really want to trade? Do you really want to trade? Is that what you really want? Is that really what you want? And we'll get the answer soon. We got the answer. Now we have the answer, but we have a lot more questions. We have so many more questions than he has answers. And now we're going to play the move e4. Now we're going to play the move e4. No, we're not. No, we are not. No, no, we are not. We are not. No, we're not. We're going to bring the bishop all the way back and bring it all the way around. Now that bishop was kind of biting on granite. Oh, if you need to taste the rainbow. I, I, don't, I don't remember the punchline because there was so much happening Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring in a second attacker 
on this piece. And now, now, and now I will celebrate. And it's too early to celebrate, but I am celebrating nonetheless. I'm still celebrating. All right, now that we are, now that, now that I have, now that I've incorrectly claimed victory, we're going to move the queen away. And we're going to say triple deke, triple deke. And now we're free to exchange on that square as much as we want or don't want. We can do whatever we want. The game is basically over. And our opponent, within the, in the last throes of desperation, and we will, of course, we're no need to reinvent the wheel. We're going to make the very obvious, intuitive move. Now, you might notice that after pushing, we have this skewer. Of course, he can play that move, but we have the pawn protecting it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to threaten the skewer. We're going to threaten the skewer. We're going to threaten the skewer. Now, he might look at this and go, Free pawn, free pawn, that's a free pawn. And, and as he's doing that, we will be saying free game. Okay, all right, all right, okay, okay, now I'm hydrated, okay, hydrated, and now I'm focused for another two to three moves. And now calendar, uh, the, I, do, I do a different calendar than other people do. So forgive me, forgive me, forgive me for that. And now the skewer is coming in and ouch, that's going to hurt. That is going to hurt. That hurts. Uh, it hurts to look at. And we're going, we're going to cash in. No need to reinvent the wheel. More than one road leads to Rome. And now we're going to play this move. And the knight, it might as well be trapped. It might as well be trapped. Now it's not trapped, but it might as well be trapped. It, it, it might as well trap itself at this point. That would be a, a, a genuinely good idea. Sure. We're going to play this move. Okay. Now he does have this move, which is clever, but it's not clever enough because we simply take with the bishop. And then even though the idea of coming back to capture with the knight, it would be clever. It would be clever, but it doesn't mean a lot. Basically, now he should resign the game. I don't, I don't think he will. I think that he will not have the courage. We're just going to play back one, just one square. Okay, now he does have the ability. Now he can play that move. Now he can play that move. He can play that move now. But I, I still wonder, I still wonder, is this objectively losing? Yes, of course. Of course it's objectively losing. We have a rook, and a bishop, and he has two knights. <laughs> okay, I've been thinking a lot about peace coordination lately. Now, I wrote an article, in fact, I wrote an article for the Chess Kianasu, I wrote an article for Chess Kianasu about that very subject. Now, if, if you have some time to check out my article in Chess Kianasu, it is, it's very funny. It's a very funny article. More than one road leads to Rome. Okay, not, more, not, all, not, all, not all roads. All roads sometimes lead to Rome. If you're going, if you're close enough to Rome, then it is not, it's not a bad bet that all roads will lead to Rome. But we're not that close yet. So now, now, okay, now, some people in the chat have gotten it correct. For anybody who is listening to me, and I know that's not a lot of people, not a lot of people are listening to me, but, not a lot of people are listening to me, but, all right, so uh, the party just ended, and now it's time to clean up. The party ended, it's time to clean up. We're gonna clean up. Clean up after the guests who left the party, okay? And that means this bishop, we have as many moves as we want with this bishop. We can take all day with this bishop, that is exactly what we plan to do. Now, our opponent is trying to get whimsical, and of course, we're not amused, not even a little amused. We're going to play this move. Cleanup time is a game that was invented in the 1920s, okay? By Chester Arthur, Chester A. Arthur, and that he was the president of the United States at the time, maybe not quite at the time, but not far from it, and we're going to go ahead and finish this game 
in style. Move the bishop down. Now, of course, attacking the knight. Now, of course, that might have been a tempting move for people who are not thinking or who don't understand chess or who have some kind of illusion or delusion. 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 So we're simply going to play right here. We're going to toy with him. Your epitaph shall read the following, courtesy of me. Okay, all right. Now, we do not want to give any counterplay to our opponent. And how do we avoid this? This will defend both. This will defend both. And now, the knight moves, the game is over. And we have won the game once the knight moves. Then it will be over. Because once we deliver the brutal, devastating, devastating check, then once the king comes into the corner, the astute observer, the astute observer, anybody rated at least over 2,600, 2,700, should see that we will be pinning the knight at that point. And it will be simple as one, two pawn moves, and then he will be busted. Okay, and now he is asking, he is asking for it. Now, of course, what, now of course, the astute observer might see that's checkmate. No, because he is now defending checkmate. He is now defending checkmate. We're going to take away a lot of counterplay right now. That's counterplay. So that pawn used to be free. There are a lot of ways to end this game. All roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Rome now. And we're simply going to play this move, continuing to defend the pawn, but now threatening this, followed by this. This is not, that's still not checkmate, but it's very close. It's very close to checkmate. And then we'll be able to come around. It is imperative that we get rid of that knight. So knight, go away, come again another day. We will deliver the check and then, then, and only then will we, will we get on to the business of winning. I'm going to retreat to my mind palace. Okay, I'm going into my mind palace. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. That move. Now we are slicing and dicing. And at the same time, now we're just going to improve the positioning of our king. We just improve the positioning of our king. Now he will not be taken back with check. And he is devastated. He is in misery and we're going to pin him and win him and now how do we win him I'm not sure and we take these are what we take we take these and now solidify the pawn chain and with 51 seconds left unfortunately we will not have time to, sh to demonstrate how winning indeed this position was but a good game to my opponent a good game to my opponent what did we do correctly? What did we do incorrectly? And how could I have possibly done anything incorrectly? Um, and of course, the Morozovich games against both Kramnik and Hikaru, very well-known games. Now, of, at this point, the recapturing with the bishop is forced, as is evident. And then the move e6 is one of two lines. Now, of course, the more topical move that you'll likely see at the beginning range of the intermediate beginner range of the intermediate phase of the rating ladder is more likely going to be knight to d7. Now this line offers a lot of very interesting opportunities. For instance, even if you move the bishop directly back, then what you see is you'll see a move like uh, knight to f6 played, and then after that, um, say knight to d2, and then after um, let's say e5 is played, castles, and then perhaps, uh, yeah, perhaps bishop to c5 and e4. Now, you're basically back into the same kind of thing that we would have seen. h5 will be played, obviously, and black will castle. And it's not 
too easy to say who would have an advantage here. This has all been played before, of course. Now, after Weak Castle and the move h6 is played, this is a serious, ma a massive mistake for my opponent. He has the ability to play the move knight f6. And why he did not go into this, I, I honestly, I have no idea. Um, a Yasser game actually went this way in 1985. Uh, he drew Kogan, which is a hilarious story, a hilarious anecdote. I would love to tell it sometime. But my opponent makes a fairly serious mistake. And now, now that he's played h6, the game is more or less over. And we now proceed and get into a bit of uh, a dicey situation early on that could have possibly been avoided, but these were all the best moves. Best move, best move, best move, best move, best move. Now, I make a mistake. And this is a silly, ridiculous mistake. And there is no excuse for it. Queen to d3 is the only logical move to be played here. Queen to d3, the idea is very simple. We are saying, we are taunting black. I thought in this situation, I thought in this situation that if he were going to take then we would simply take back. He would take, and we would play this move, attacking the bishop, and then after this and this, then he would most likely be, try to escape this way, attacking the bishop at the same time. We're going to allow the capture, then we move the bishop back. Now, he takes, and we take back, and guess what? Guess what? Now, this knight ha cannot access this square, he cannot access this square. He cannot access this square. The knight is going to have to go on the rim or to a completely unadvantageous position on the board. The game would be over. The game would be over. But, of course, what I missed in this position was rather tricky, which was that after this, this, and followed by this, followed by this, followed by this, and this, he has this move. Our opponent, our, my opponent, I'm guessing, did the same calculation. And that's why he played queen to d7. And uh, obviously the best move in the position by far. And my opponent plays the best move. And now I make not just a mistake, but a, an actual blunder. But even I have been known to make mistakes. Because after taking, we cannot take the queen. He takes back with check. And even though I move up and I am attacking, yep, I'm attacking. Oh yeah, I am definitely attacking. He plays this move. And this is what I did not see. Because after the king follows... Now he takes back with the queen. Now I take with the knight. The knight comes back and he threatens this move. Our opponent likely thought that this didn't work. He likely thought this simply didn't work because he thought I'm going to simply get to this point, recapture, and that's, that's it. But then that h3 comes in, h4, h5, bishop to c3, and all kinds of havoc is being unleashed on the board. And it, it's hard to say who comes up in that. It's a difficult position to evaluate. But rook to c7, this is, this is where my opponent finally shows his true rating. His position was basically lost at this point. As you can see, the engine evaluates this at plus 0.4. The game is basically lost for my opponent because this is a simple tactic. We are going to... Threaten to overload, threaten to skewer it is a double threat tactic. And now, the, what is the move? I would recommend this, that you, 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 you pause the video and you take a few hours to look at the position. Now, e4 is basically the best move in the position. Now, it's said, okay, you can prepare it with f3, but I thought there's no need to wait for that. And this is a devastating blunder. Now, the more accurate move to be played in this position is, of course, knight c6. But knight c6 is making 
an enormous concession because in comes this. And how to deal with this? Well, that knight that you just moved is going to come back and say, hello, how are you? I missed you. And then even if we take back threatening this, he takes with check. We move out the way, all right? And the game is basically even. So if our opponent finds the move knight c6 in this position, it's basically even. But knight c6, an almost impossible move to find for a human. Of course, it would be an easy move for me to find. Now, this is a blunder, and it is a blunder for the reason that we play the move that we played in the game, bishop to f4, and we have prepared. Our opponent makes the concession. He says, you have won an exchange. I am down and out. Now, the more accurate move to play here is queen e3 to play an immediate rook c1. And if you caught that during the game, then good on you. And then after the move, rook to c1, and the advantage is plus two, the game is over. We play the move bishop to b1. We do not want to let our guard down. We have to be incredibly precise. We cannot play anything less than the best move, every single move. He plays queen f6, and now we play queen to c3, the only move defending both pawns. This move is played instead of instead of instead of the move b3 which leads to this very forced line that everybody saw of course everybody watching the video saw this and yes even beginners will see this of course of course it's very easy to see but our opponent doesn't capitalize on the move quite as well as he should have we won on time of course i think that my opponent the, the last few moves by my opponent were a bit haphazard, as I feel like he knew that he was completely lost. And if you can't see at home why it is so obvious that he is lost, because after we trade down, we have a rook and he has a knight. And on top of that, we are going to, in short order, now we have two connected pass pawns on the outside and a rook. If you can't win this game, you should never play chess again. And frankly, you should have never played in the first place. Both of us played about 85% accuracy. Uh, it's approximately similar to a FIDE master level game or a beginner level game. Okay, and that's it. That's it. Okay, and I haven't slept. I haven't slept in three weeks. I haven't slept at all in three weeks. It's been three weeks since the last time I even got a minute of sleep. Okay, all right, and now my brain is already asleep.